my portion of the uh, discussion today is really to provide an overview, and uh, it certainly will uh, be somewhat of a brief overview because, as was suggested, there are many, many um, efforts um, ongoing uh, surrounding the medical home and care coordination throughout the country. Um, and so my goal is to really talk about some of the um, general improvements within healthcare systems to improve health um, care outcomes through the use of integrated and coordinated care. And where we really start is um, with the triple aim, and I, I think that this will be familiar to many people on the call. Well, a lot of attention these days is around um, the coverage and benefits. Um, really, this is um, the core of where we start to transform care. And as a starting point to remind people, the triple aim of healthcare reform is to, one, improve the patient experience of care, um, and this is really about meeting patients within the community. Secondly, to improve overall health, and that is really by increasing connections and collaborations between healthcare, public health, and other sectors within the communities. And then finally, to also reduce costs. And this is really uh, focused on improving the efficiency and effectiveness of services. So many healthcare transformations are currently underway that have the goal to achieve this triple aim to improve care and health outcomes while reducing costs. So really, as we start to look at this, there are several means by which health system transformation is happening. Um, integrated and coordinated care includes a range of activities that link individuals and families, families to services in a more holistic manner. And this really starts as relationships um, between specialists, but really now as we move forward is beginning to link to um, uh, specialists outside the traditional uh, medical forms. Caring for children is almost always conducted in the context of the family. So coordination is about helping to connect a child to needed services while also assisting the entire family to provide for their children's care. And this is where family and patient-centered medical homes really um, start to take form. And finally, accountable care organizations um, attempt to make care coordination easier not only for patients and families, but also physicians. So let's first talk about family and patient-centered medical homes. Uh, first introduced in 1967 by the American Academy of Pediatrics, the term initially uh, talked about the center of children's medical records. Uh, this over the years transformed into more discussions about children and youth with special health care needs. But over time, it has really evolved to describe primary care that is accessible, family-centered, coordinated, comprehensive, continuous, compassionate, and culturally effective. And hopefully many of you have already heard of these um, uh, terms to describe the medical home. In a family-centered medical home, the pediatric care team works in partnership, and that's a key word, in partnership with a child and the child's family to assure that all the medical and non-medical needs of the patient are met. The team can help the patient and the family access, coordinate, and understand specialty care, but also educational services, out-of-home care, family support, and other public and private community services that are important to the overall health of the child and to the well-being of the family. As we continue to look at care coordination, we need to consider how it um, functions within the family in patient-centered medical home as a bridge across various systems. Um, involving pediatricians and other physicians, but again, schools, head starts, and community-based organizations. We get to key concepts of co care coordination when we consider how it might be comprehensive, how it continues to be patient and family-centered, and how there is always appropriate follow-up to ensure better health outcomes for children. And what's important as we um, continue our discussion is how this all works um, through a feedback loop uh, where the medical home is a starting point um, into other services that then continue to link back um, in that bi-directional manner. So some basic goals of care coordination. 
They should be based on patient and family-centered approach that stretches beyond the primary care physician. Note that uh, these goals are addressed through the elements of the triple aim. Less fragmented care, which serves to improve health outcomes. Less duplication leads to lower health care costs. And an improved experience, which is good for all, including those providing the care uh, within the team of the medical home. Now, in spite of the desire of uh, pediatricians and other physicians to coordinate care and be a medical home for their patients, there can be barriers. Um, as we go out and work with um, practices, um, many express that they do not have the time or resources to dedicate to care coordination. Historically, physicians have not been paid for the provisions of these services, such as assessing the need for long-term services or time spent developing and implementing patient-centered care plans or coordinating care across multiple providers. Some people uh, will describe this as living in two worlds. There's a great desire to do what is right, um, but at the same time, um, there has not been a payment uh, to recognize this. So this discussion now moves forward to how are we beginning to achieve this with the barriers previously noted. There are various ways health systems are moving forward to address this. For example, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Medicaid, has started to take steps to guide state Medicaid offices on the importance of care coordination and providing states with various strategies to strengthen its use in an effective way. And you will note some of these. Um, they are building care coordination into provider standards for medical homes, supporting primary care providers with care coordination entities, building care coordination requirements into contracts with managed care organizations, and implementing multifaceted interventions to improve care coordination across systems. How else can we start to address these barriers? We can also start by asking the questions. How does one identify those who would most benefit from care coordination, including but not limited to children and youth with special health care needs? And how do you begin to measure care coordination? We recognize that the Pediatric Quality Measurement Program, um, which is monitored by ARC, um, the Agency for Health uh, Research and Quality, um, has developed um, some very specific measures. In specific, uh, the CHIPRA, um, Children's uh, Health Insurance Program Reauthorization Act, recognized and important to look at uh, core measures, but also to enable centers of excellence uh, to develop further pediatric measures. At least one of these centers is looking at the very issue of care coordination, specifically looking at care coordination uh, for children with medical complexity and for children with social complexity, um, including those who are healthy and those with non-complex chronic conditions such as asthma. Additionally, um, measures are being uh, developed uh, to look at transitions between sites of care and the quality of these transitions. And of course, work is ongoing to um, further uh, develop models to uh, identify children with special health care needs, but also to identify uh, children who may have social complexity. And then of course, as we begin to develop these measures, how do we continue to use these measures to promote continuous quality improvement, to promote and support ongoing care coordination? Another important step in addressing the need for care coordination to improve health outcomes was the ACA, uh, which included a provision that created medical homes in Medicaid. For the first time, the ACA provided a federal definition of medical home, referred to as health homes in the law. Under Section 2703 of the ACA, states can develop optional Medicaid health homes for Medicaid beneficiaries who have chronic conditions. Under the law and subsequent regulations, CMS indicated that it wants health care providers to operate under a, quote, whole person, end quote, philosophy. Again, getting beyond just the chronic conditions. Therefore, physicians and other non-physician clinicians, as well as community health workers and care coordinators, began to integrate and coordinate 
all primary behavioral health and long-term services to support and treat the whole person. The law specifically indicates that health home services include comprehensive case management, care coordination, comprehensive transitional care and follow-up, patient and family support, and referral to community and social support services. Again, you might recall some of those keywords um, from uh, the previous defi definition of the medical home. Federal regu regulations require that all providers report quality measurements of medical homes to the state. And states are required to report utilization, expenditure, and quality data to CMS for evaluation. Additional federal guidance also encourages the use of health information technology to link all of the provided services to increase efficiency and coordination. To date, 16 states have approved Medicaid state plan amendments to implement health homes. Another way the ACA works to move health systems forward on greater care coordination and integration was the creation of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation. The purpose of the CMMI, as it is called, is the development and testing innovative payment and service delivery models to enhance the quality of care while reducing costs. We'll discuss CMMI grants a little bit later. CMMI has been providing states and other stakeholders with grant funding to do just that over the last few years. Much of the work being done with these funds includes care coordination as well as work with accountable care organizations. So how do accountable care organizations fit into our discussion? Accountable care organizations help to provide the infrastructure and incentives needed to facilitate collaboration across different types of providers and, or, and organization. On this slide, you see how CMS defines accountable care organizations. Uh, again, you see the elements of the triple aim. The goals of delivering high quality care as well as high value care, that is spending healthcare dollars more wisely, are achieved in part through care coordination. ACOs, in addition to providing infrastructure and incentives for these activities, can also align resources to meet both the clinical and coordination needs of the patient and their families. ACOs can also help to overcoming the barrier of payment that was discussed earlier. They reward physicians who are able to manage the care of their patients and meet certain quality measures, including things such as reducing hospital admissions and emergency room visits. A recent study of ACOs by the National Academy of, for State Health Policy describes a range of strategies taken by states to drive value-based payment mechanisms aligned with accountable care principles. The 18 states discussed in the report are implementing various strategies in Medicaid or in state employee health programs. The four areas the report focuses on are financing ACO models, developing state standards for ACO certification, fostering the creation of community-based organizations, such as networks of state-run coordinated care entities, as in Oregon or Alabama. In Alabama, the state was divided into regions and community-led regional organizations that are charged with coordinating the health care delivery to Medicaid patients. And finally, redefining managed care organization contracts to align with these ACO principles. Of the seven states supporting their own ACOs, Arkansas, California, Iowa, Maine, Minnesota, New Jersey, and Vermont, only California is not Medicaid-based. Rather, it is for the California Public Employees Retirement System. As you know, 13 of these states involve pediatric populations. Another example is Minnesota's Integrated Health Partnerships. Demonstration. Nine ACO contracts were awarded to various providers and partner organizations, including networks of clinics and hospitals, FQHCs, and 12 counties and local provider groups, which do include pediatric populations. Three states are developing a regulatory framework, 
Massachusetts, New York, and Texas. And creating a regulatory framework will help to facilitate the formation of ACOs and uh, promulgate uh, common standards for design and performance. Eight states are creating community-based organizations or redefining managed care contracts to better reflect ACO principles. These states include Alabama, Colorado, Hawaii, Illinois, Louisiana, North Carolina, Oregon, and Utah. As stated on the previous slide, there is much state-level work happening regarding ACOs. State Medicaid programs have also been moving forward with developing other models for increasing coordination. In addition to states implementing accountable care models, many states are also beginning to pay for patient-centered medical home programs and have had Medicaid state plan amendments, as previously described. Let's also talk about the state activity in regard to CMMI grants and their role in healthcare system changes. CMMI provides states with grants to move their work of developing innovative healthcare transformation forward. The State Innovation Model Initiative provides support to states for the development and testing of state-based models for multi-payer payment and healthcare delivery system transformation. The projects focus on people enrolled in Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, otherwise known as CHIP, as well as Medicare. Almost $300 million have been awarded to 25 states to design or test their models for improving health and payments and delivery systems. A majority of the funding in Round 1 was for states to test their innovation models in six states, Arkansas, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Oregon, and Vermont. All six states have requirements for practices that participate in the model to be recognized as a patient-centered medical home in the state. So as I mentioned, Minnesota, my home state, is a recipient of the SIM grant. And the overall goal is really the triple aim, to improve health, provide better care, and decrease costs. The grant in our state is really expanding on an existing um, ACO program, including the IHPs previously described. Essentially, it's expanding patient-centered, team-based care through service and delivery and payment models to support integration of medical care, behavioral health, long-term care, and community prevention. It really depends on prior reform models to support secure exchange of clinical data, statewide quality reporting and measurement for providers, and strong systems for coordinated care through our previously described healthcare home model. The goals are four. One, to test how to provide and pay for value-based care by expanding ACOs to multi-payer systems. Secondly, to develop common measurement across payers, improve clinical data exchange at, cl at the clinical provider level, and align payments and risk adjustment. Thirdly, to really support practice transformation. And this is really to uh, model the best of the best through statewide learning collaboratives and shared learning through short-term learning seminars. Practice facilitation and practice transformation grants, especially for smaller practices and rural practices, are promoted. We're looking to increase um, healthcare home certification from nearly 50% to 70% and expand to what we call behavioral health homes. And we're looking to also support an emerging workforce and look for new team members to the medical home. Finally, we're actually moving the ACO into something we call accountable communities for health, recognizing that health is really much outside the borders of our uh, clinic walls. Accountable communities for health require a community-led leadership team, but also to include an ACO. They develop community-based care coordination they must have a population-based prevention component, and all accountable communities must participate in measurement. So overall, the things we've discussed today provide an overview of what's happening around the country to promote and provide care coordination and encourage the use of family and patient-centered medical homes. This is an issue that is constantly moving forward and changing as different models and programs are implemented and evaluated. Uh, we can expect more changes in the future, 
Um, listed here are some resources from the American Academy of Pediatrics. And please be sure to visit the National Center for Medical Home Implementation website for additional information and resources. Thank you.